What's up, welcome back. Let's keep jamming. We're working through building out a blog system with comments. In the last couple episodes, we went through building out a flat set of comments here and going through some performance improvements addressing the N plus one problem. So if you haven't seen those videos, head over and check them out. In this episode, you'll learn all about how to make nested comments. So just like we have here on, um, on Hacker News, We've got uh, the ability to click reply, and then you can sort of see an input box and reply to a specific comment. And they could be ne like deeply nested like this, where we have several comments replying to another comment. Um, so we'll look at how we can do that. So let's get started. So if we think about how we might make this reply work, it sounds like, or seems like we might want to link here. And when you click on the link, it will display sort of the same form or input that we had below for adding a comment at the top level. So we'll call this sort of the top level, meaning like the leftmost oriented comments, the, the leftmost aligned comments will be about the post itself. Those will be sort of like original comments or yeah, top level comments. And then any comment that's nested under it will need to actually keep track of which comment that comment is in reply to. So in that case, we, we kind of have like a parent child relationship between some sub comment and its parent. And so for instance, like this comment here is a, uh, the child of this comment. And this comment is the parent of this comment. And so when we're building out these associations, if you look at this closely, this, this comment here can have many sub comments. And so when we're thinking about how the data might be modeled, I think what we want to do is store the ID of the parent comment in the child comment. That way we can have a child comment belongs to its parent and a parent comment can have many children comments. So let's make that uh, adjustment to our database first so that we can support nested comments. So we'll come over here, Rails G migration add parent to comments. So we're gonna store it, we'll store the ID of the parent comment in a column called parent ID. So let's see what that looks like. So we're gonna jump in here and we're gonna say add column to comments. We're gonna call it uh, parent ID. And if we think about whether or not this can be null, it must be nullable because when you have a comment at the very top level, it won't have a parent ID. And I guess, that might be all we need. Technically, we could enforce referential integrity and some other stuff and add foreign keys, but we'll keep it simple and we'll just say we're adding a column called parent ID. It is a, an integer and it's nullable. And yeah, I think that's all we need. Rails DB migrate. Now, typically, or throughout all of this entire application, we have been following the Rails convention where our association columns are named the correct way so that we can get away with using all of the Rails conventions. Now, in this case, we need to have our comment belong to its parent. Now, in order to belong to the parent, we need to specify the type of the parent because we don't have a parent class, right? So when we say belongs to a user, Rails is assuming there's a class called user. When we say belongs to post, Rails is assuming there's a class called post. There is no class called parent. So when we're saying that this comment belongs to its parent, we need to say that the class name is parent or is comment. So we need to specify the class name. The other thing that we need to do is we, we have to say if a comment has many comments or has many sub comments or something, right? So has many comments. So this will be like all of the children comments that a specific comment has then again, it won't know um, which column to come back to this comment class for. So we need to specify the foreign key in order to derive the list of comments for the comment. So here we can say foreign, uh, foreign key is parent uh, ID. I think this might work. I think this might work. So let's go over to our Rails console. We're gonna say reload, and I think we ran our migration. So we should be able to say like comment.last, and then say c.comments. So there's no comments, that's great. c.parent, that should be nil, great. Now let's create a child comment. So c.comments.create, we're gonna pass in post 
ID. I think we still want to have the post ID, even if it's a child comment. Um, yeah, I don't know. That seems seems like a good practice. And then we will also pass in the user ID is four, and the content is I'm a child. And we'll say create. So we created a comment. It has a parent. So C C is I C's ID is eight. Now this new comment is ID nine, but its parent is eight. So this comment here, I am a child, has a parent comment eight. So if we go back to our um, to our view here and refresh, you'll see that this comment is showing up at the top level. It's not showing up nested under its parent. So let's actually say C dot content is equal to like I'm the parent comment C dot save. Oop. C dot save. Oh, okay. So the parent, it says the parent must exist. Okay, so this is something that we have to do. So in addition to saying it belongs to the parent, we also see, need to say that um, it's nullable. Um, allow nil true. I think is how we say it. Or no, it's like optional true. Optional. Optional true. Re reload. C is comment dot find eight. C dot content is equal to I'm the parent comment C dot save bang. Okay, so now C's content is I'm the parent comment. We come over here and refresh. I'm the parent comment. We want this child comment to be nested underneath the parent comment. So we've got to figure out how to make sure that the comments that are showing up at the top level are those that don't have any parent ID. So let's make that adjustment. So we'll come over here and actually let's also confirm that c.comments. Okay, so c.comments does have all the child comments as expected, so that's great. So let's come back over to our um, post show. And this is where we're actually running the query to pull out all the comments. And um, I think what we want to do here is say like dot where uh, parent ID is nil or something. And that should just give us just the top level comments. So we should not see I'm a child here anywhere and we don't. And that's so that's great. The next thing is that we want to go into our comment partial that we created in previous episodes here. And in addition to printing out the article for this parent comment, we also want to iterate over all the sub comments and sort of recursively use this partial. So we can say render comment dot comments, I think. I don't know, let's see. All right, so now we've got I'm a child printing out. The, the horizontal reference is a little weird because it's happening uh, inside of that thing. Okay, and then also like, because this is the child nested under here, we want some visual, some sort of visual indication that this is happening underneath class or like, I don't know, class, it's like sub comment. And we'll try to figure out how to write some CSS <laughs> slash div. All right, so then if it's a sub comment, then we want, we want to like, oh gosh, you know what? Hmm. Yeah, okay, so we're just gonna do this and we're gonna say inspect and we're gonna find sub comment and we're gonna say padding left is 10 pixels. Is that enough? 20 pixels, sure, 20 pixels seems good. Um, and then it's gonna get a little weird when we have multiple sub comments that are like styled relative to their parents or something. I don't know. We'll see how this goes. So we're gonna go to comments, SCSS. So we have the style sheet here where we can write our own stuff. So dot sub comment. I, you probably haven't seen me write CSS because I don't, I don't like CSS. <laughs> Padding left is like 20 pixels. So now if we refresh the page, we've got ourselves some nested comments. That's pretty cool. So let's figure out how we can actually add a reply button. We're gonna have an issue here because if we have, if I'm a child has it nested, I think they're gonna line up also to the left, but we'll come back and fix that in a minute. So let's add a reply button or link or something. And when we click on the link, we will see the form to add a comment. We've got a couple options. One is we could take a naive approach and just put the form on every single comment. So we could say render, 
partial comments form. Locals is post comment dot post. Um, but now we have a f we have the comment form on every single comment. I've seen blogs that have this. It just looks exactly like this, <laughs> um, but it's not the greatest. So let's go back to our form. So now we have the form on every single comment. I don't think that looks very good. So what I want to do is actually go back over here to our comment partial and let's hide the form. So a drift reply. Okay, and then I think what we wanna do is put this inside of a div that has like um, class form or something like that, or like comment form. And we'll say comment form display none. And then we've gotta figure out how to make this reply button so that when we click on it, it shows the form. So let's try to see if we can go in here and we can find the comment form. And what we want to do as like part of our exercise is actually just uncheck that or like make it so it's displayed. I'm trying to figure out how we can actually make this work. So class like comment form display. All right, so what we want to do here is when we click on the reply link, it should show the comment box that is right next to it. And so the first thing we want to do is grab reference to all the reply links. So we can do document.query selector all, and we're going to pass in this comment form display. And that's going to give us back a node list. So this node list is all of the different links. So that's all of the different replies. And with a node list, we can say dot for each, um, and we're going to call our, our link, um, Maybe we'll call it EL for our link tag. And inside of here, what we want to do is uh, we want to add an event listener to each of the links. So we're going to say EL.add event listener for the click event. And when the click event fires, call this function that's going to take in um, the event object. And the event object, we want to say prevent the default because we don't actually want to like navigate anywhere. So we're going to say ev.prevent default. And then next, what we want to do is we want to sort of find uh, the next, let's see, we want to find the next element in the DOM. So here, uh, the comment form is the, the tag that we want to find. We want to show this comment form. Right now, recall that it's display none. So we want to set its display to block. And so, what we can do is we can look at the element. So that's the link tags, next um, sibling, next element sibling, I think, and say dot style is equal to display block. And I think that might actually make it so that when we click on this, yeah, it shows the form. So now we see this display block is applied directly in line. So that, that is taking precedence over the class level display none. So if we remove display none from the class level comment form, that would show all of the, the buttons. But here we're just applying display block to that single element so that it's shown. And here we can say like, I am a child of test. And when we submit it, oh no, this is appearing as a top level comment. So let's head over to the database and see what's going on. So if we say comment.last, Oh gosh, okay, so we see parent ID is nil. That's because we didn't actually set the parent ID when we were creating the comment. So we've got to do a couple things. First of all, inside of our comment form, we need to pass down the parent ID if there is a parent ID. So in this case, what we might want to do is say, let's create like a input type hidden or something that has the name comment parent ID and the value is going to be um, uh, parent.id. So we're, we're expecting that there's going to be some top level parent value that's passed into the form when the form is rendered. Um, in some cases, this might not exist. So what we might want to do is say if parent.nil, if, if the parent ID is not nil, then render this. So if the parent is not nil, then we're going to pass its parent ID. Otherwise, we are going to omit this hidden field. And then when we're on the comment partial, 
we want to pass that parent ID down as part of rendering the form here. So we're going to say parent is comment because we're inside of the parent comment when we're rendering that form. And this should make it so that when we show the form, it displays that. Now, what we're seeing here is there's no local variable or method parent for this action view. And that's because at the top level, the top level comment form that we passed in, we did not specify any uh, parent. So back over here where we are rendering show, we have this partial that we're rendering out for the form. This one also needs the parent. We're gonna say the parent is nil. If we refresh, now we're back in business. And if we look at this reply, why isn't this working? Oh, the JavaScript that we wrote, we didn't actually do anything with it. <laughs> okay, so let's copy this and let's paste it into our comment partial. So we'll go down here and just say script. Uh, all right, just for now, we're gonna keep it here. In practice, you wanna organize it nicely and stuff, but we're just gonna keep it quick and easy. And if we refresh, can we see it now? Okay, so now it works, cool. So now if we say, um, I'm a child of the child or something, submit. Nope, that didn't work. Okay, so when we click on this, this form, let's inspect the form and make sure that it's actually getting the parent. So it is getting the parent ID here. Ah, but what's happening is that um, even though we're passing the parent ID to the server, as we can see in the server log, I think, let's find the post request. So even though we're passing the parent ID here, nested under comment to our post request here for the comments, we haven't implemented it in the controller. We haven't like sanitized or um, permitted this parent ID to be passed in in the controller. So we need to go back to our comments controller and update this so that it also permits the uh, parent ID. So now we can refresh this. Let's try again. Another try to make a child. Boom. Ah, nice. Now we've got a nesting going on here. I'm a child of the child. Another try to make the child. All right, let's go to another post here. Let's go to post 10 so we can start from fresh. So this is, this is the grandparent. Okay. Um, this is the parent that is a child of the grandparent. Submit. Okay, now we're going to say this is a grandchild, or this is a child of the parent. And oh, wow, it is nested. Amazing. Okay, cool. So I was worried about the padding working deeply nested. I'm a baby or something. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. So we've got uh, parent, grandparent, whatever. If we wanted to, we can still reply, I think, to the grandparent. This is another parent or something. Okay, so now that one is nested underneath. This is the grandparent. But one thing that you'll notice uh, if you're paying close attention is that, number one, um, these comments are not ordered the same way as the top level comments. So um, this top level um, comment will appear at the top. Wow, I spelled so many things wrong. Okay, and then, um, so this top level comment is the most recent comment, it's appearing at the top, but this is another parent was the most recent sub comment of the grandparent. And that's happening because inside of our comment partial, when we're rendering the comments here, they are not ordered descending by ID. So the reason I use ID descending here instead of like a created at or something is that um, the ID field is indexed and it's faster to order by ID instead of ordering by created at. All right, so that is how you build nested comments uh, with Ruby on Rails. We've got this blog application now where you can, uh, you can create posts, you can comment on other people's posts um, and you can thread those comments. Thanks so much for watching and we'll, we'll see you in the next one.